What's going on people? Welcome to this week's episode of the Flex and Rant show. Obviously I'm here with the usual suspect in crime, Rants, but on to my right, man like does a bent. What are you saying? I'm good, man. You? Thanks for joining us. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I haven't just got him here just because um, we've got Tottenham coming up. You know, that is one thing. But, you know, you're in the mainstream media now, you know. Yeah. You've got a good outlook on stuff. You've been enjoying it? Good? I've been, yeah. The transition's been good. Uh, different shows, talk about different subjects. It's nice to talk about more than just the teams I played for. Yeah. I get to talk across, the, obviously, the range, the board of teams, all divisions. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It's been good. Before you come on, pay some respect to Ollie and like, talk, talk about yeah, the stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I know someone else ain't going to give their respect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's get straight into it, man. Um, Rance, we're going to talk about is Solskjaer making progress? Right, is this team making progress? Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, because you know at home, I'm going to know, and, and it's true. A lot of people say to me, but Flex, Rance always says this and that, you've got to push them on certain things. And you know what? It's true. We are making progress. I can see it. I can see it in certain areas. I'm not saying we're there yet. I'm not yeah. saying we're, we, we might not even ever get there on the social, but we're making progress in certain areas. So let's discuss that fact. We'll come to you in a sec, Daz. Is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United making progress? Yeah, yeah, the team's making progress, absolutely. Defensively, I think we look more solid, especially with the three at the back. I can't remember, well, De Gea made a couple saves, tipped mm. the Foden one over the, the Sterling one. Yeah, if Sterling, Sterling scores that, I reckon it's a different game, innit? But other than that, they don't have much to do. Mm. I think we're, defensively, we look a lot better. Luke Shaw at left centre-back, I like him there. I like Brandon at left wing-back. I don't like either of them at left-back, do you know what I mean? So I think that that shape, it works. Mm. I like that. What about... Obviously, since Bruno's coming, yeah. Um, some may say that it's all down to him while we're playing so well, but others are yeah. saying, well, it's a buy for another buy from Oli, another step in the right direction, another type of player, type of mentality that we need. And although he wasn't all over the place on the ball yesterday, when he didn't have the ball, he's infectious. He's, he's chasing down people. He's initiating the press. He's, he's organising. He's saying to other people, you run here, do this, do that. Is that another positive as well? Yeah, he's, got, he's well? got the right attitude, bro. Mm. Like, he told Pep to do one as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and, and that was beautiful. Anyone that gives Pep the finger, boy, I'm telling you. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'll give him the armband tomorrow for that. Yeah. He looks you know like he's, he's got it on and He's, a, the, he's on a winner, the do you know what I mean? He, he was a captain at his old club as well. Mm. He's got the right attitude and he's just got individual brilliance. Mm. The assist for the goal was individual brilliance. Mm. And a lot of the assists that he's had or goal involvement is individual brilliance. And mm. the difference was that was going to Pereira that was going to Lingard before. Mm. Now it's going to a proven quality player. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So we're definitely improving. I think once everyone's fit, it will echo what I said. Man for man, our squad ain't really that bad. Everyone was laughing at me. I said we should be finishing top three with the players we have. Man, we're laughing. Mm. And now it's actually a possibility. But without Bruno, was that a possibility? We all said in January no, but how even, important it was to get no, creativity. But with everyone that. fit, because you swapped Bruno for Pogba. Like when Pogba mm. was playing in that advanced role, he was shelling yeah, down the place mm, anyway. I agree. I said, I said that. Are we making progress? May not make progress. I said that from way back. That I said that even before Bruno even came in. Like if you look at Man United, if everyone's fit, Man could have done a match. Yeah, Fred top Pogba, mm. easy, top easy. Top. Thank you. But I do think you are making progress. I don't think he necessarily gets the credit he deserves yeah. but I think with Bruno Fernandes I mean he's been he's been brilliant but it is individual brilliance I mean, yeah. he's, he's just trying things off the cuff but sometimes he's going to go for a period where it doesn't work yeah. and then people are going to give him pelts like well he's just keep the ball simple but right now it's all working players are enjoying it but also as well he's willing to try things mm. and I think that's been a problem at Man United they could become a bit too stale where it was a bit predictable where you pass sideways pass backwards and you weren't really creating anything but when you've got someone who's like a free spirit who comes in mm. will try things and it works everyone loves it that, that encourages other yeah. people to mm. do it but that's what they've been talking about about the, the infectiousness of him in terms exactly. of one player can lift the club I mean obviously throughout like your career manager, when you're playing new player, exactly the new bounce yeah. Yeah. Is, is it as is it, easy as that when you've been around dressing rooms where one player could come in and, and have a lift is it that simple sometimes you just need that signing that can just come in and just lift them do you know what it is and from like a, an attacking point of view a striker's point of view I play in midfields where it's a little bit like you're waiting on scraps, basically. Mm -hmm. like you're not really creating anything. But when you've got a midfielder that you know full well that if I make the run or do something, he's going to try and find me. Like Martial for his goal. Mm -hmm. like, I'm sure if, if McTominay or Matic are standing over that ball, Martial's not going to try and run. He's yeah, probably right, going to yeah. go the other side of the box. But mm -hmm. because it's Fernandes, he starts thinking, well, you know what? He might just try to go, let's work on something. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, as I play myself, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get opportunities here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just take a, a chance. 
I might get myself a goal. So I think it is infectious and it just encourages other people to be more confident on the ball. And I'd love to see, I, mean, I don't know if it's going to happen, but if him and Pogba can somehow get on Madness. the pitch at the same time, Madness. you're a completely different team. Again, you go to another yeah. level. Mm. But well, you know what? This I'll come to you in a second. I know what you're going to say. Numbers as well, well bruv. I remember, yeah, in, um, I think it was the Everton game. Bruno gave the ball away like 22 times. Mm. But he was trying to try things, yeah, 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 yeah. And no one said anything mm. because that's what happens. And the only bit of good stuff is going to come from him. And, but he scored yeah. the goal. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And when players like that are trying to do things, mm. they're going to give the ball away, bro. This leads nicely into, which I didn't really want it to get to the Pogba situation. Because it just, every single thing at Man United always roots back to Pogba. To be fair, I heard a couple of lads who sit uh, in front of his box and Pogba had to eject a couple of people. Went and got the security. I said, can you wow. get these like up? They turn around giving him pelts, just, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, as, as some people do. But for you, you look at Man United's midfield now, mm -hmm. and Gary Neville was saying it on, on Sky Sports that it's looked empty, it's looked like, you know, discombobulated, like there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. You're looking at it now, with Matic coming to form, Fred tearing up trees, doing yeah, well, doing well McTominay yeah. doing well, and now Bruno. The argument is now like, I know you're not going to ask me, will Pogba get into that? <laughs> listen, listen, I'm not saying, I'm not saying on ability. Get into the no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. I'm not talking about ability. Yeah. I'm saying, in terms of, in inverted commas, upsetting the apple cart, because he may only be here for a couple of months, or he might only be playing to get fitness, go to the Euros. Does he get back into that side for you, on, on that side of it, in if terms of the team harmony? You know, if you're looking to keep him, yeah. Yes, put yes. him in there. Him, I think Bruno will rub off on him, and them two together. That'd be um, mad, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> but I think obviously, if you're looking to move him on, or he's not happy being there, then don't risk it. There's no point in just for a couple of months seeing what he looked like because you're only polishing yourself. Like if he goes in there for a couple of months and plays unbelievably well, mm. but he still wants to leave, mm. it's him like, oh look what we could have had, and he still goes. So. And you create another problem with a void to fill. Exactly, and also you've got to take someone out of the team necessarily. And go, oh, by the way, now Pogba's gone. We've got to fill back in. It won't work like that. But yeah, if but on the flip side, side, yeah. If you well, don't okay. play him, yeah, and then we go for a bad run, a man like. Why aren't you playing Pogba? Mm. Then it could kind of. Well, I don't think they will now. I don't think they will because there's been so much negativity around Pogba. And listen, I'm a big fan of his. Mm. I think on his day, he's as good as anyone in world football in that centre midfield yeah, role. But I think because there's been so much negativity, I think if they don't play him, even though he is fit, I think people won't understand anyway. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of a win win for Oli. Like, yeah. if he gets him in and he plays well, everyone's like, Oli, masterstroke. If he doesn't play him, we'll be like, well, we're behind Oli anyway. Mm. Mm. On Solskjaer, how much does he deserve credit um, for what he's done? since he's come. Started off amazingly well mm -hmm. in the interim role. Yeah. Got the job, it went downhill. Started off this season, our worst start in 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> this, these are just the facts. Yeah. It's not me trying to create an agenda, this is the facts, yeah? Yeah. Since then, Bruno Fernandes has come in, mm -hmm. steadied the ship, with three points off top four. I keep reverting back to the start of the season when the transfer window closed and we had wan James and Maguire. A lot of Manchester United fans, including us, said, oh, but that team, I don't know, man. That's with everyone fit. We're looking at fifth, sixth, man. I don't even know. Yeah, fourth to push. And Oli's got us there, challenging for fourth, challenging, looking to hopefully get into the semi finals of the FA Cup. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, should beat Norwich. Going into the last stages of Europa League. Is he doing a good job? I think he is. Um, you look at some of the signs, you look at when he first got the job last season, that initial period was crazy. I mean, Pogba mm -hmm. himself got himself Madness. in the PFA team of the year, <laughs> yeah. got him like 11 games. Yeah. It was on smoke. Yeah. <laughs> then, obviously, they, start, they struggled at the start of the season. But if you look at the, the people he's brought in, like Maguire, he's, he's done okay. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Wamba Saka, brilliant. brilliant. Dan James at the start of the season was fantastic. Look what he's done for Rashford's confidence. He looks like a new player. Mm -hmm. um, Bruno Fernandes. So, you'd have to say he's doing a good job and he needs time. I mean, he was left, when he inherited the squad, he inherited a lot of deadwood. Mm -hmm. People that didn't necessarily want to be there, felt they weren't good enough to be at Manchester United Football Club. So, in regards to that and where they are now, knocking on the door of top four, you can't say he's not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going in the right direction. Will they ever catch up to Liverpool, Manchester City with him in charge? Who knows? But they are making strides, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, Liverpool are flying. They're, they're yeah. phenomenal, them two, they're Manchester City. But for them to only be, what is it, three or four points off of top four from where they were, yeah. they're, they're making strides. You, you can't hammer him for that. Rants. But this is it. it. it does so that, no, that that. Put the, he hit the nail on the head. He said, oh, are we going to catch up to Liverpool and their man with him in charge? That's mm. how I always judge every manager, bro. Because but can as we, far as I'm concerned, yeah. we need to be challenging for the Premier League or we need to have aspirations to do that. With that guy in charge, you ain't getting nowhere near clear. But the aspiration is there. They obviously they obviously aspire to do that, but in this in the stages that we have to go. So Darren's talking about the players that we have to get rid of, the yeah. culture shift, the mentality, the new breed of player that you have to bring. It has to be done in stages. Is Solskjaer not doing this that process? This is a beautiful right? stage, and now it's primed. So has he not? Like, what I'm saying? No, but what I'm that's saying. That's what it is. No rant. A real man. Are, how long has Brendan been at Leicester? Are you not giving? Are you not giving Oli credit Bro, for that then? How, how long has Brendan been at, um, at Leicester? 
just what we're here now, isn't it? But there you go, yeah. and you see a clear identity, a clear mm. way of playing, a clear something. He's not a better manager than Brendan. You know was it a bigger job at Man United, though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. in terms of, yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying, He though. came into, no, so but what I'm he, saying is... only not got the harder job, a manager, even though it's A manager that ain't got no style of play, no philosophy, man substitutions baffle me. Like, man, <laughs> took, man took off a striker, brought on a centre mid, and then, like, ten, with, like, six minutes to go, brought on another striker and that. Like, it's like, it doesn't compute. Like, every game, like, Everton, Diamond, no shape. No one knew where they... I didn't know what formation we were playing. It was a shambles. It's like, man's still learning on the job. And it's like, he's only getting his patience because of who he was. Because if that was anyone else, he would have got chopped, rude boy. And the thing mm. is, when you look at Moises' points, yeah, we're still on course to finish with less than that. But then, if, if, man, if there was a manager with more experience... Like, was, man were flying aeroplanes. All right, then. So if Pochettino, then, let me think. If Pochettino was at the helm this season, yeah, and had this transfer window that, that Oli had, right? Yeah. And these, these amount of injuries that he had then got to January and got Fernandez and was knocking on the door of where we are now, would you be saying Pochettino is stable in the ship, we're going in the right direction? No, I'd be saying. Because I think you would. We'd already be in the top four if we had Poch from the start of the season with these players anyway. But also, I need something to buy into, innit? Like, I can't see what man's doing. Like, even from them substitutions, I'm like, brother, So you, you can't really you, sure? you can't see progression in the season. No, see I can see that we're getting better and I know that if we keep bringing in better players as a team, we will we will get better. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, don't I, don't, not, I don't think you're not that far away though. I don't, but that's what I said. I, I said to you... So if only gets the right man in the summer, what's not no, to say no, that he no. can't kick us Flex, over? Did I not say to you we're like three players yeah. away from challenging? Yeah, but you're but also no, saying, Andy, we need a good manager. That's right, because even if he, <laughs> <'cause> even <laughs> if he gets three balls... Damn if you do, damn if you yeah. don't. Bro, because we don't... The one thing that we lack here is consistency. And the reason why we lack consistency is because we lack an identity, a way of playing, bro. Do you know what I mean? That's why Liverpool can play rubbish and still win, bro. Do you know what it is? When you look at Man United squad as well, and I say you're not that far away, you're not. Like, so you look about, obviously, a goalkeeper, he's still great. But even if, say, he moves on, you've got mm. Dean Henderson to come in. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that, that's covered. And Romero, a good number two. Yeah. Maybe another centre half, you'd say. Yeah. You need one. Yeah. I think fullbacks are right. I think Brandon Williams was good and like Luke Shaw. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're capable. Well, Maybe one centre, mid, one centre midfielder, potentially, mm -hmm. and a centre forward. Because mm -hmm. if you look at your attacking options, Greenwood, Rashford, right, well, Martial, James, mm -hmm. it's all there. Do you know what I mean? So you, you add another centre forward and a proven centre forward. You know, I'll be challenging for top four easy next season mm. with one or two additions. So, yeah. for me, I like Oli. I think he's doing a good job. But it doesn't really matter who's sitting in that manager seat. I still think you'd be where you are now anyway. Mm. But I do think it helps that you've got a legend of the club, someone who knows the club better than anyone, but the players who are buying into. So, I just think that... I know people. some people are saying, Oli's not good enough, Pochettino's there, but... I just think you've got to give Oli a little bit more time because I think he's doing a good job. See, but I think it's a sentiment thing. I really do. Because as I said, like, yeah. when he was getting when he was getting moved to by everyone, because even though we got a good record against Pep and all that, mm. we're getting moved to by by like other managers like Pearson and the But can't that happen in the transition rounds? And it, the, bro, the famous saying is just where it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Bro. And the way yeah, because we the keep way getting it wrong. Bro, exactly. Is this, bro. Is this not the closest me, thing that we've got to a bit of continuity? For me, Poch is the right guy, blood. Like, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, as you said, like, we use the analogy of the Netflix series. Give me something to buy into, yeah? This guy's shown me, yeah, that he provides stability and continuity at Southampton. And he done the same at Tottenham. Tot mm. Tottenham, man, weren't rating Tottenham the way they're rating Tottenham now. Got them to Champions League final and net spend of 15 million. Mm. Like, this guy's shown me at his previous two clubs that he can go three, four years, build something... That last, isn't it? Oli ain't shown me nothing. Bro. No, I, just think I can't buy in. I can't buy into the fact that he's a club legend, bro. Like that's not enough. For I me. think if you sack him though now and bring Pochettino, that's no, like, but I don't that's think you sack again. him. You give him a nice. No, but I don't think you're starting again because he's got a nice young squad. Do you know what I mean? Some technically very good players, and he can build on that. I don't think he's starting again. I think starting again was coming in and having the Lukaku's there. I think that what Oli's done well here yeah, is get rid of the man. So you're giving him that, credit for that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. There is some credit. Yeah. <laughs> what he did well was get rid of Sarsman. Obviously, Lukaku didn't want to be there anyway. He didn't want to be there anyway. There. He didn't yeah, yeah. Be there anyway. However, what he did do well was it kind of... it. Now the squad's starting to look like more uniform instead of looking like five different men's team. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I think it's primed for a manager with pedigree to come in and do something. Because I genuinely believe if we have a good summer mm. and we get potch blood, like, we could chance for top three. I, I still think you could do that anyway, even with him in charge. I, I think you top three? Him. With Oli in charge? Oh, yeah, I still think... I've seen signs this season. What he done against Manchester City? Oh. He beat him three times. And the Liverpool game at home when you got drew one all. Mm. Like, the, the, the players are there. If you can get everybody fit and everyone going in the right direction and a couple more signings, like, you know, there you've got good, good players. I, I, think right, I don't right. think it's just the players, Listen, though. Yeah. I think if that you, you, if you, you have to rely on your manager. I don't mm. think, yeah, that, like, if you just give any manager 11 good players, that will just be enough to win titles. I don't, I don't yeah, think all right, that's let's, the case. Let's look at the positives, then, yeah? If you look at the actual facts of the positives, yeah? 
Solskjaer's coming, like you said, the, the bit you gave him credit for, Lukaku didn't want to be there, Sanchez, all of that stuff, yeah. moving players on, Chris Smalling thing is actually still debatable, to yeah. be fair, he could actually come back and have a future, exactly. you never know, <laughs> <laughs> right? but, 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 but he's had to deal, do that, yeah? yeah. Um, in terms of who he's improved, well, Luke Shaw, after you know, a lot of criticism, he's still it's coming to, he's still not but consistent he's improved though, he's improved, you can't say Luke Shaw hasn't improved, Brandon Williams has come onto the scene, he looks good. Martial, you could say, yeah, but it's Martial that's Martial always been good. Improved. Martial's but, always but, been No, but what I'm saying is, he's playing well. Rashford, best season of his career. Fact, Mason yeah? Greenwood. Mason Greenwood emergence, and he said that. That's five things. In midfield, looked like Matic was the forgotten man. He's got him Fred. playing. Fred, under, under Mourinho, people are saying, this guy, show me his passport. Is he even Brazilian? <laughs> Don't know. And his name's Fred. What was Fred. that saying, though? <laughs> what was like, that saying, Black? No, exactly. Like, no, exactly. Like, but again, so you me. said it, but again, so as a manager, that's six things mm. that he's done. But Solskjaer so wasn't even on. playing Fred either, Blood, and everyone got injured, Hold and then he got in on a no, technicality, fam. Fred, Fred, like, well, was, Fred, was going never, with Fred was not playing, bruv. Stop lying. It was Hold Matic on. and McTominay. No, Matic was out of the team from the bruv, start, Rams. No, Matic got injured. Fred did not start the season playing every game. He did. He did, bruv. He did. You, man, pulled that up. Pull it up. He did not. I'm telling you, in pre season time, Tour, Matt, you could see that McTominay was going to be the guy with Fred. He was playing him every Fred game. Fred never played every game, lad. Fred came into the team. I, be, I believe that Oli believed in Fred. Because he's always played him. I know, because yeah. I, you know why? Because I was taking pelters for the Fred thing, yeah? Yeah, because people didn't agree with what you're saying, Bro, but Fred was playing games. Because Fred wasn't playing. He wasn't playing at the time. He wasn't playing at the time. I'd say more at the back end of Joe saying that, and maybe even last year, all right, cool. This year, mm -hmm. I think Fred's been... He's been brilliant. No, but, but I think he's been play. playing. Him and Juan Bissaka have probably been our players of the season. Bissaka, another thing, another positive that Solskjaer's done. That's yeah. seven. How, how good's he been? You could say that he's an English signing, it was always going to happen. The fact that he brought yeah, him in. Maguire, good. made him captain. If, if he busts that, I know there's been times that you've gone, why are you trying to use the ball too much, trying to prove it. The last five or six games been colossal. He's been colossal. He has. He has defensively. Def clean sheets, Rance. Clean sheets. We, we, we've yeah. got a lot of clean sheets. Defensively, we look as good as we've ever been. I was talking to Adam in the fan camps yesterday, and he was like, I don't care. We've got the best defence in the league right now. He was saying in terms of you said that. form. Instead of who? He was saying, he said on form. Well, right now. Right now, in the last couple of games. He said, he said Liverpool are conceding. <laughs> yeah. He said Man City are conceding. Spurs are all over the gap. Chelsea are conceding. He's like, we've got a steady ship. Look, the arguments out there in terms of the best Liverpool over four. Do you know what I mean? No, on four, but no, it, I think we're getting a bit gassed because Liverpool conceding goals. But back to us though. Attacks the best form of defence, isn't it? That's, so they get away that's with it. They get yeah. it. But they got, are leaking. We've got five men back there, so if we can't defend with five But our defence is, is looking okay. Midfield, right, he's brought in Bruno Fernandes. You can make what you want of it. Oh, that's an easy signing to make. He's brought him in, he's made a difference. Mm. That's nearly 10 things. That Solskjaer actually has done. There's a lot of debate. That I'm kicking as well. But I hate. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That he really, really wants to fight. Like, no, there's been debatable things. You just don't like it. Like, you just like, don't like it. No, but it's not that I don't like, bro. Like, understand, yeah, for me, as I said, man needs to see certain things, innit? As you said, there's certain things that he's done and there's certain things he hasn't done, innit? Mm. A lot of people, yeah, if you're one of them sentimental brothers, you're focused on all the things that he has all done sisters. and that. Is it enough? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but what if he wins but, but for the me, season and the European Cup? He said he could win everything. He still don't want him there. No, Two no, shows ago, no. he said, yeah, this I, was, I, he, said I, he could win the World Cup, the Champions League, the FA Cup, the League Cup. I go, but that's ridiculous. He'd be better than Pep. Yeah. He'd be better than Pep. He'd be better than Pep. He'd be better than That means you just don't like him. Nah, because you know what it is? It's not about like. The thing is, yeah, like, the way I always look at the club is what's the best thing available, bruv? I don't want to say, all right, let's keep him for three years and then we'll get to third and then we'll try and win the league. Nah, bro. Like with Manchester United. But can we go from where we are to winning the league? No, not straight away. We have what to do the stepping stone of City, City, for nah, finishing fourth, bro, finishing second. City legs are wobbling right now, blood. Do you know what I mean? They're there for the team. No, do you know what though? I think with City though, I think, like you look at the game yesterday, I think, yeah, you look at a better team, but I mean, they dominate possession. Yeah. But they always go. Bro, listen, yeah. that I game felt like. Prioritising the Champions League. That game yesterday yeah. felt like the 4 0 when we beat Chelsea, when Chelsea were knocking on the door. I'm telling you, even though we beat them 2 0, yeah, if Sterling was that goal, it's a different game. Bro? I think that's a comfortable save for De Gea. No, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, 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 no. was saying his team played really well. They kept the ball well. No, but, but, for but, once, I actually felt around in around the box. Comfortable. Well, yeah. Quite comfortable. Yeah. When we, we defended were very up, well. Bro, when we were one 0 up, yeah, the first twenty minutes of the second half, my belly was doing mad. I, 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 I give you that. I'm sitting there front row. It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. I think it only makes change. Seventy third minute, man waited till, and then he brought a McTominay for Martial. But then, but then I'm gonna say this. And then brought on Kulagalo. Seventy sixth minute, cuz eighty sixth minute. No, no, no. He's involved in the goal. I agree. I agree. I agree. In in that terms, maybe could change it earlier. And for me, Martial's a bit jaded. I would have just done like for like, just to take off Martial, bring on Kulagalo. 
Yeah. Like you tried to put uh, Fernandez and James up front. James can hold the ball, whatever. But having said that, yeah, you have to look at yesterday's game. Let's talk about yesterday's game. People say that's negative. Man United are at home and going five at the back. That's a disgrace. That's not Man United. Listen, the old Man United's gone. <laughs> yeah. The old Man United's gone. <laughs> let, it, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, so, yeah. Solskjaer has to look at it like, yeah. what do I need to do to make us effective in this game? And people take give pelts to Dan James. His end product's not there. Yeah. And people are trying to say he played five out of ten yesterday. I'm not having it. Because yesterday, in yesterday's game, yes, he should have made different... Um, final, um, final, 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 final balls. Yeah. So should Martial. He should have rolled in... Um, but he got his goal. No, no, what I'm saying is, shot, without, without Daniel James yesterday, how do we stretch City? How do we give them something to think about? You need pace in your team. And he's got... You and have quick, pace. But Dan James is yeah. like that, that bullet pace and you're yeah. right on a counter-attack. If he, if he can sweat his final decision-making at mm. the end, you're not going to have won by two, three of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. But I just think at times, it is the decision-making, which is the problem where it'll keep running and running and running. Get tackled and then you have to sprint back. Yeah. 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 And I think that's where it starts to frustrate. He turns people. the ball yeah. over, but where I disagree was he effective yeah? yesterday? Where I disagree is I think yeah that if because we, we don't take care of the ball and that is my problem with his coaching. If we took care of the ball, we don't need to rely on a channel ball to Rashford or a channel ball to Daniel James. You could play in a Galo, take care of it, build up, build through the midfield, play it to your striker, play it off, build up like Liverpool build up. They don't just ping it into the channels and say, "Man, they chase that." Nah, but you, do you know what I mean? They you, do it you, sometimes. You can't man. That's front three. No, that, that front I know. Ball, I know. What I'm saying. Yeah, even though ours have more goals than this, but. Do you know what I mean? It's one of them ones you can't, but what I'm saying is because of the method and the way they build up the play, which is coached into them, they don't need the one outlet. The reason why we rely on Daniel James is because we don't take care of the ball. We don't, bro. Harry Maguire's hitting man in the channel straight away, bro. Like, it's all Sunday league-ish. Mm. But is that not just playing to no. his strengths then? No, because if you look at Daniel James' have... game, he don't really have much nah, to it. But he so to bring him into the game, you have to have, yeah. But that's why I'm saying... Yeah. You're saying that if we didn't have pace from that, but yes, if we took care of the ball, we wouldn't have needed that out ball because mm. we could have built up and, and, create actually, something. and created something. You know what I think, though? In games like that, that game for me is perfect for Dan James because mm. if you're playing against a team that want to sit back and defend, yeah. then Dan James is not the right person to draft because you're not at all. Which happens a lot. Absolutely, which like, happens yeah. a lot, yeah. which is yeah. why I say that he's but an But when impact. you've got a team like Manchester City that are obviously uh, putting a lot of people forward yeah. um, and you've got spaces in behind them, then just put it in behind. I know it looks a bit on the league, as you just yeah. said, mm. but it's effective. But it's when you've got teams that drop deep yeah. and it's like two low blocks and there's no then space and you drop to dribble and it doesn't suit him. Mm. But yesterday, teams like yesterday yeah. and Liverpool, where the two fullbacks will go and there's that space, then why not? And it looks, as I said, it's on the league ish, mm. but it's effective. It, it is, is effective. in a way, but the thing is, like, what I'm saying is, you see, when you talk about stretching teams, like you've got strikers that will run the channel. Darren used to do it. You can run the channel. You can oh, hold it. We're twenty-seven stops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but you can yeah, run. You, you can run it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trust, I <laughs> <laughs> for the eighteen yeah. after that. Yeah. Trust. But you can run the channel. You can hold the ball and bring people in that way, and you can build counters that way. With Daniel James, he runs into space. He picks up the ball, head down, run straight. Look, there's no one there. And I was gonna say looks up, but he doesn't. <laughs> and, then, and then the ball comes back. Do you see what I'm saying? And yeah. then you're under pressure again. So you're relieving the pressure only momentarily. Mm. Whereas if you've got a striker that can put his foot on the ball and hold it and wait for man to come, then it's a different way of building what up. What about Rancia? The fact that actually, Dan James, yeah, all right, he's not 17. You know what I mean? He's 22. All right, cool. Yeah. But he's a young player mm. coming from the championship for £15 million. Yeah. How about... He's not even supposed to be really playing yeah, he didn't this much. He, he, he probably that. didn't expect exactly. it. Exactly. He would have even thought if, if I get on a substitute here and there, yeah. I'll be happy in my yeah. first season. But he got ox off the bat to start, mm, yeah. start, 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 yeah. start. So obviously his, his form is always going to do that because you're talking about going from the championship first of all, which is the step up to the Premier League. Yeah. But going from Swansea mm. to what's that, what's that step up like? I mean, yeah, you you played in the championship, you played in the Premier. It was hard. How is it? My transition was alright because when I first left Ipswich, it was in the uh, the old Division One yeah. to go to the Premier League in Charlton. Charlton were in the Premier League, but you'd say the clubs were like kind of the, the same. Do you know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. Curvishy, Curvishy, yeah. So the transition for me was that wasn't that big. Going from Charlton to Spurs though was big. Mm. It was still big, but it's still nowhere near the size of Swansea. To you talk yeah, about yeah, one of yeah. the top two biggest clubs in world football. Yeah. It's difficult. Do you know what mm. I mean? So it's about how quickly you can settle. And to be fair to Dan James, when he first went at the start of the season, he settled really, really well. His form was brilliant. So that kind of stood him in good stead. So that if he did have a wobble later on in the season, people were like, well, listen, you've got to give him a bit of time. Look at the start he had. But the hard thing is if he'd have gone from Swansea to United and not hit the ground running, mm. people would have been on his case. Yeah. But because he's bought himself a little bit of time, that's why you got to stick with him. Okay, listen, that's the first section of the show, basically talking about how Solskjaer made progress. 
I think we got a yes out of Rance, kind of. No, no, wait. Right. no we didn't. No. Did we not? No, no, we didn't. No, the team and the <laughs> team. <laughs> All right, no, we didn't. Still, I tried, I tried. He's still, he's still, he's still tactically inept, brother. He, he's tactically not inept, schooling pep, inept. schooling clock. Man said schooling and that, brother. Pep you know what, him. yeah? It's pep all right, bruv. They've got plenty schooling. of coffee in the back. You always call him Pep for the early. He's got done yeah, by, do, he's got like, done by the PE teacher. Because I'm a troll, that's why, blood. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? I call Pep that all the time. I, bro, I was sleeting Pep yesterday, but I don't mean it. Do you know what I'm just saying? Just to finish off on this section. Viola. All right, then. So just to finish off on this section, then. If Solskjaer, then, you know, you talk about how we lost at home to Burnley, yeah. Palace, uh, Bournemouth, you know, those little games where... If we get if Solskjaer, if Solskjaer we turn around. turning it around and we start slapping everyone, What yeah? would you say? What, would you say? Uh, what did I say? You when you him out. No, when you asked me yeah, the question... <laughs> would, bro, when you asked yeah, but he's not wearing the right tracksuit. When, <laughs> <you, laughs> <you, laughs> when you asked me the question on the show, yeah, you said, when would you yeah, stop yeah. being on when, the yeah, out? When, what did yeah. I answer? When we start preparing everyone. No, I said, what did I say? If we finish in the top three. Remember I said that? So we finish in the top four. We finish in the top four? three. I said. So four of the season, you said no. No, because we should. So between third and fourth, you're saying Oli and Oli. That's what yeah, it depends on. We're better than Leicester. We're better than Leicester. Wow. Mm-hmm. If right, we finish okay, above right. Leicester, man ain't saying Oli out yet yeah, until we're languishing in eleventh next season, blood. And then <laughs> the banner's coming back. Yeah, out. Have we had flip flops out? You know. Yeah. Man, walking up. <laughs> Bro, man, walking the beach and have we had Come on. I did tell you. I did say top three because you made me answer the question. All right, all right, cool. You made right, me answer cool, the question. Cool, cool. All right, cool. Let us know what you guys in think. In an ideal world, I'm has, singing this porch, you know. <laughs> has Solskjaer made progress? Can you see the direction we're going in? Or do you see it as it's isolated moments, we're still not there yet, and you think a different manager would do a better job uh, with this squad? I personally think, at the moment, Solskjaer, he's doing the best with what he can do, and I can't really argue with where we are in the league right now. And... There's still nine games to go, so if it capitulates from here, we end up finishing seventh. All and right, then I'm cool. gonna, I'm gonna you know wheel I mean? this back up. You I know you will. I know you. But, but the same way is if we get top four or top three, if we get top yeah, three, and Leicester like, crumble, then the yeah. whole, the whole, the whole universe on YouTube is gonna come for you. That's Let fine. us know what you guys are saying. All right, next up on the agenda, man. We can't not talk about this. Um, I know we've we've played well against City, and and we're talking about celebrating players playing well and stuff like that. Jesse Lingard, he's had a he's had a tough time this season. Yeah. Hasn't been playing well. He's the first to admit that. He, he is the first to admit that. But he was subject to a lot of abuse um, coming out of Derby's Derby's ground. Um, Your team, um, from a from a past player's point of view, but even as a human being, um, what's what's your take on on what you saw and 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 how Jesse must be feeling after that? Yeah, it's disgusting. I mean. First and foremost, like no one deserves to take that mind, that kind of abuse. Um, but it must—I mean, it was difficult to hear because obviously I played at Derby for three and a half years, and I never ever heard that from any set of fans coming out of there. But that—I mean—that was just terrible. But in his face as well, where he signed up grass for kids, he's, he took the time to stop there and sign up grass. But where I say we failed, kind of a society, is that surely people in that area must have said to the guy, "Listen, be mm-hmm. quiet." But I've got kids. I know Derby's a very family-oriented club, so there would have been kids about everywhere. For someone to be hurting that kind of abuse out. Surely someone could say to him, listen, mate, stop stop saying all that language. You've got kids here, you don't deserve that, regardless of whether you think he's playing well or not. First and foremost, th- there's platforms to, to, to criticise someone. Not in that nature, but if you want to say that he's not played well, fair enough. But yeah. don't be hurling that kind of abuse out of him, because mm. look at the effect. You're, why are you doing that? You're encouraging other young kids who are in the area, yeah. oh, it's all right to behave like that. And I just don't think, I don't care how bad any player is playing, no one deserves to get mm. that kind of criticism. And is that, is that the key? I mean, some people were sort of saying, Rance, and this is the flip side of it, and this is what they're saying, does. They were like, because you're a fan channel, people can come on and express negative opinion. Pe- you know, people come on and abuse players and stuff like that. And I did say, as a content creator, as an interviewer, I've got a, a, a duty of care now, it's especially more so. I'm more astute to it now to make sure people don't cross that line. Yeah. I think co- criticizing footballers' p- performances is is completely justified at any yeah, level. Absolutely. That's that you know, as a fan, you have a right to an opinion. 100%. But I think when you're then going off topic and some fans uh, could be guilty of it maybe not as the severity of that but where you're then criticizing maybe the way they look or the way they talk or, or it, it becomes personal and i think that is true but that abuse that was yeah, there bro, like, it, come on as man. i said it depends because you see when they're criticizing players and that for instance like keynote the other day must have made a joke saying that like his daughter's stronger than adam lalana and that on Sky mm. Sports, mm. like cool, but he's not adding him on Twitter. Mm. Or if he saw Adam Lodano in the in the corridor, he's not gonna go up to him and say you're F Y. Mm. Whatever. Like, do you mm. know what I'm saying? No, but he wouldn't. I'm not unprovoked. <laughs> not unprovoked. Un- un- Maybe King would. <laughs> he's not gonna run up on man just. Do me a favour, my Teddy and Do me a favour, Adam. He's not gonna run up man, run up, run up on man cold. You know what I'm saying? While he's yeah, on his yeah. mobile phone and say, yo, 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas Jesse's just doing what he's doing and you're abusing, man. Like, I can't mm. have that. Mm. And the thing is, if Jesse was to turn around and react, he would have won that would have got punished for him. Like, and we're seeing, we're seeing, pitch, yeah, we're seeing and, players and start to react now. When the man ran on the pitch, and I think it was a Jack Grealish that got attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Punched, yeah. Like, I said personally, like, man, them should have rushed him. Mm. Like, they should have. Like, right, because if Jesse was to, when he was getting that abuse, yeah. I mean, and he's, he's actually, he's about like two yards away, he's getting yeah. that. The day just, after the Eric Dyer thing. Exactly. If, Je- if Je- Lingard, you know what, jumped over the barrier, it's Jesse Lingard that's going to get punished. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand players should react, but listen, there's a line, and for, for everybody, people obviously the disciplinary action, the FA, these guys, if someone's there in your face abusing you, and obviously at the end of the video, it's like you're not sure if there's a bit of a racial slur in there yeah, as well. You have yeah, to protect yeah, that, yeah. That's where all of a sudden now, you stop becoming the football player, and you start thinking, well, hold a second here, I'm not having that. Mm-hmm. And then if you could kick in, do you know what I mean? As human beings, you'd be like, mm-hmm. well, I'm not taking that. And also as well, we don't know who's there to watch Jesse. So imagine like his kids are exactly. there next to it or his parents. It's, mm. And this is where people need to seriously have a, have a word and come down hard on these guys. But then how can you punish these people? Mm. How can you find them? Like that in that situation, I think you'll struggle. On yeah. line, that's not a problem. But yeah. I think in that situation, because if no one's coming forward and saying it was him, it was him, how can you find these guys? Yeah, it's very them? difficult. What, what would you have done? I mean, jump the barrier. Would you? Man, I didn't do Colin Jackson. You don't even have to ask me why. If my my kids were there, hearing that, I'm over the. You jump what? You you have Tottenham. Yeah. You're finishing the game. Yeah. Even if it's even I think even like for the Jesse Lingard situation, if I'm coming outside, look, bro, I can hear someone peltering me. Would you have said? I would have jumped the barrier. Yeah. Even even (laughs) even if it's one of my teammates. Yeah. I would have jumped the barrier. Jumped the barrier. Especially as I said, the last piece. Well, you mm, hear it in a sure racial, I'm, I'm, yeah. over. I'm over the barrier, what's going on? That's Absolutely, it's a madness, bro, because the thing is, we're all allowed to criticise performances, whatever, say what we want to say, bro. Like, even on social media, what I don't like is when people see, like, people's, like, um, given an opinion or something, a man are acting the players underneath and that. Mm. Bro, have your opinion about the game or who didn't play, well, you don't need to act these, man. Leave them alone. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Have your opinion, but why do you need to come into their personal space to let them know they didn't play well like they don't know? Do you know mm. what's funny? Is that I, I've learned more so to be this out of it, that when you write something and you get a bit of criticism, like people will go at you hard. Yeah. The moment you at them back yeah. and talk to them about it, they're like, oh. All of a sudden they're like, well, nah, it's just my opinion, but like, I don't think you're that wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? Let me energy go with zaps. Yeah. Like, that's what, what I'm saying. A lot of the time, the bravery that these men get is kind of like, yeah, I can help these men, I can help them, I'm protected, I'm protected, I'm protected. They're too protected. Because back in the day, to actually say something to a man, you had to be in their face, and then what what comes, comes. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But now, because of social media, people are just jumping on people mm. and think they can act man and abuse man and this, that, mm. and yeah, we're talking about people's it's also, kids and it's, all that. It's also jumping on the fact that, well, they're Premier League footballer, they're not allowed to act me yeah. back. They're not allowed to jump over the barrier. Exactly. They're, they're not allowed to give abuse back because they, they have to be this professional. Yeah. And I think the Eric Dyer thing is, is very it's very testing to that because... You know, I heard, I think, Jamie O'Hara saying that, yeah, but at the end of the day, he's a professional footballer. Nah, he's a human doing being, that. bro. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, with your family. He, he kind of saw both sides, but I, f- I felt he was leaning more towards, but dies a professional footballer, he shouldn't do it. But then, at the end of the day, it's like, well, at what point do you stop being a footballer and then you're yeah, human... But this, what, but this is what I'm saying. comes into it. You, if it's your family, and I know Jamie's probably saying that, because um, it's obviously the, the correct thing to say. Yeah. But at the same time... First of all, first of all, it's personal preference, mm. yeah. and I know full well, well, a lot of people that I know, when family gets involved, yeah. then all of a sudden, head's gone, mm. head's gone, Instant. then pr- yeah, profession goes it. out the window. Yeah. Exactly. So, did you, did you, did you experience any of that? Do you know what I didn't? Um, obviously, like I always remember having conversations with my dad, and he always used to say that the hardest thing for him when I was starting out is that you can't please everyone. Mm. So there'd have been times in getting I might miss a chance, and he'd hear the abuse, mm. but he just got to sit there and take it because for him it was all part and parcel. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I've obviously if my kids that turn out and play football and they're getting hammered, I don't know how I'm gonna to react to it. Mm-hmm. But my dad would just say it was just part and parcel of the game and me playing football. Mm. So it's a tough one, man, because it's tough. I think they do have a duty to be, you know, professional footballers. Like Jose said, he it kinda Jose's been saying a lot of crazy things recently, yeah. but he kinda didn't know that. I thought he was like, he did what we can't do, but did what I think everyone would do. Yeah. Yeah. And, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that pretty much sums it up. We we all know Professional footballers are not supposed to be leaping into crowds and, and doing up Godzilla stepping over. But, but, you know, <laughs> but that's where it's personal preference because some yeah. other guys on the pitch might not react to them, might have just gone, oh, okay, leave it, I'll sort out afterwards. Yeah. But it's him at the time, I mean, you know what I mean? Mm. We don't know how close he is to his family. Mm. Before. Well, I'm not having this. So it's his little brother there in exactly. that situation, isn't it? Yeah. There you go, let us know what you guys thought. Um, what I think is, is a whole holistic approach is the fact that us as a fan channel, Yes, there's going to be bad performances, there's going to be bad results where fans can boil over or, or, or give a, 
a real passionate opinion that might be overboard. There's, there's probably people on the fan cams that probably look back at it. You, you could ask Saeed. I don't know if you've had some fan cams where you thought, oh, I look back at that, maybe that was a bit strong. It can happen. But I think what we do have a duty to do as, as human beings, whether we're football fans or not, is that level of abuse. Like you always say, if you, if you see Jesse or you see these bro, people, you've got, nothing, you've got nothing good to say. Leave say them nothing. alone, yeah. bro. Do you know listen, what I mean? Yeah. I, I, like, I even that. when their man went to Ed Woodward's house, yeah. I can't stand the Ridiculous. guy. Whatever, I'm not going to his family home. If mm. I see him on the road, I'm walking past him. Yeah, you're I'm not going to go up in I'm his not face gonna, I'm not when go he's, up, I'm not when he's go shopping in Lidl. You know what, <laughs> you're X, Y, Z. Yeah. No, leave man yeah. alone. He's with his family. Do you know again, what I'm again, again, crossing his line, going to his house. There you go. And that's what that, I'm that's, saying. That's if you think these footballers aren't playing well or they're not good players, that's cool. Voice your opinion. But don't be abusing these men on the road because you wouldn't do that to... I ran them on the street because I put hands on you, bro. Mm. Like it's the reality. They would. But I think it's United that bad that they had to go to his house. Like that. that bad. <laughs> Pro flares and all Do that. You know what I mean? And then there's some people on Twitter pacifying it, saying, saying "Oh, there was it. only a couple of little flares. No one was even there." That's the sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. that, you know they it? turned yeah. up. So that's the human race. Someone was the, there. That's the mentality we're dealing with. Exactly. The fact that okay, so the fact that his wife and kids knew that they were there was intruders at their home is now not going to make them feel uncomfortable. But they weren't there, so it don't matter. But that's Unbelievable. The thing, that's the whole Jesse Lingard thing as well. Even when I tweeted about it, it was disgusting. There were people on there that were trying to justify... But he's been playing crap, though. Exactly, like, like justify that he deserve that. Yeah, it's madness. Let us know what you guys think about the Jesse Lingard situation, but we will do our utmost as well, me especially, interviewing fans to make sure that people don't go overboard. All right, now let's look at the week ahead. Um, we've done a little bit on, obviously, the City game, and we didn't really talk about the Derby game, but that was a routine performance. Um, you know, what you've what done. <laughs> one of your old teams, we already spanked one of your old teams, we're about to spank another one of your yeah, old teams. Yeah. Um, Spurs, Spurs coming up. Um, if we can go and win that, um, as in Man United, uh, it'd be big for us, um, massive. Joe say it's, 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 it's going, it's going, it's going he's, having, he's having a tough time. Yeah. He's having a very tough time. Yeah. Expressions, I told you. I've got the manual, your brother's got the manual, I've got the post-traumatic Jose disorder in Slack. Bro, I'm here for you. When you need it, and I you need you, it, it's there. The third season throwing players under the bus bro. already, do you know what I'm saying? I told you, if he's not parking the bus, he's throwing players under it, brother. I told you, that's what, <laughs> that's what he does, do you know what I mean? So, as I said, I'm it's here there. for you, bro. Third season syndrome in the first season. Is he, is he, is he all right? He's no, he's struggling, man. You watch some of his videos, mate. He said, I'm not going Burnley, fam. I ain't going Burnley, bruv. I ain't going, man. And then they got, they got mashed up. You know what I mean? They got mashed up. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, they luckily got a draw. He's, he's scared for Man United coming. He's struggling. But, um, I mean, what's your thoughts on, on that game? How you how you expecting Spurs to try and approach it? We're we're confident. Could it be could it be one of the anti climax where Jose could stink the place out, get a result? Listen, he could do, but it's, it's going to be so tough for them. I mean, obviously the feel good factor that seems to be around Man United now, which is turning, but obviously the negativity around Spurs and sometimes when that place turns, man, it turns. But it seems to happen a lot around Jose, which isn't good. And I was the one who said when he got the job, I was all for it. I thought, right, you let Pochettino go, you had to bring in someone of a, a certain stature. Should have called me, Dad. I'd have let you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a certain stature. But when I say that stature, like as in a serial winner of trophies, he won trophies at your club. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, but for whatever reason, it, it's just not going to plant the minute you're right. He's throwing players under the bus, but listen, you have to put into context as well. He has lost three of his best players, and now people say, yeah, but we've had players out. But you talk about Harry Kane, one of the best strikers when he's fit. Well, yeah. mm. Son, one of the most effective players in the Premier League. Absolutely. Yeah. So Soko does about six people's running. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So these are three, three big players. What about defensively? Because something you associate with. With with um, Jose, which to be fair, even the back end of Man United, it wasn't he, none of his um, identity was there. The no. Jose was gone, but you don't expect to see a Jose team leaking goals like they are. I just don't think he's got the players to, to play a certain way, and I think he, he's that cautious of it as well. Because you look at the weekend, he tried to go obviously five about about five defenders, mm. not wing backs, up, set, maybe <laughs> yeah. five centre half. Do you know what I mean? And still dead, and, 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 and it didn't work. Yeah. He's got Sesson Young on the bench, who's a left mm. wing back. He can mm. play well, but. I think he's just trying to find a solution to stop leaking goals, but I don't think he's got the personnel. I think a couple of years back when Poch had them, obviously they were younger, mm. quicker, defensively was strong, but obviously they've not really added to that. They let Danny Rose go, which for me was a bit of a surprise. Mm. And I think you've got to give him this season, and I think starting next season will be big for him. In the mm. summer, you'd have he to say. He needs a big transfer window. Yeah, a massive Are they going to get that? Those, you know, you look at Spurs in the new stadium, it's almost like Arsenal have to go through it, moving into a stadium and they're getting mugged off by the ball, not getting no money, no players, yeah. and that. but you're told we came here for for this reason. Yeah. Um, with Spurs, you know what, Daniel Levy, you know, you've been there and he's a shrewd businessman, yeah. a shrewd chairman. They've built something for the future, an amazing stadium, but if they don't get Champions League football, can you see Spurs giving Jose Mourinho 150 million, 200 million? Or they're going to have to start offloading. But listen, they might have to if they want to get back to the Champions League. Yeah. If they're, because there's no point. I'm sure, like when you get a manager that likes to spend money, who goes to a club that don't spend any money, there's got to be some kind of agreement there. Yeah. Listen, if I need you to open the checkbook, 
we better do it. Mm. Because these problems were always going to happen. But I think in the summer, he's got to bring at least three or four now, three or four players, and three of them have got to be defenders. Mm. Because for Tongan, he has been very good, but he's getting on in age. Toby over the world, he's obviously legs are starting to go now. They've got obviously um, Tanganga, mm. I like him. Young Blass, he can play at right back. Davis is getting Davis yeah. is, is getting on a little mm. bit. But then you've got Cessignon who can play left back. So the fundamentals are there, but Davison Sanchez, oh, he's a bit of a liability. He's quick, mm. strong, mm. but Mourinho didn't fancy him when he played against him. I remember yeah. hearing stories about, I think they played Ajax when he was at, was it United? And they targeted and let him have up the ball because he's not very good on it. Mm-hmm. So I think midfield play, I think they're all right. Attacking, they're fine. But defensively is where the problems are. And goalkeeper. Yeah. I think as good as Larissa has been, he makes, makes mistakes. Too many mistakes. When Gazaniga comes in, makes too many mistakes. So yeah. I think a lot of the players they're bringing have got to be defensive minded. Can we go and beat Spurs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you said, said that? <laughs> yeah, but I said it even before. Like, I said it to my brother. I said, we have to do Spurs, innit? Mourinho going back to his old clubs as well. He hasn't got a great record there mm. either. He always gets spun by all the He looks <laughs> jaded, bro. Lampard. Lampard. He's not even shaking Lampard. Lampard's hands. <laughs> that was your guy, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? That man used to talk in the shower. Now he's just not even shaking man's hand. Mm. Mourinho's done out here. I'm telling you, he done the little prison trim as well, like he's doing the little siege <laughs> thing. He's done, bro, I told you. And unless your yeah, club start accepting nectar points, they man ain't getting no players either. Mm. I don't know why Mourinho went there. I can't believe that Levy said there's 200 mil for the, like, there for him. I don't know what he thought he was going to do. I genuinely think that he's deluded. I oh. think that he saw the Spurs squad, and even in his press conference, he said, like, with the players I've got, X, Y. I think he thought these men are primed for me to just do something they're all the right age mm. i can kind of work my old magic and just squeeze a trophy out of these then the injuries hit and then well. boom yeah they have yeah. Some, listen they have got some good players like yeah the Celso's a good player yeah, yeah very good. good i mean tango i like him as well on dumbbelly but for whatever reason sight down on them i mean i think he even criticized him this weekend saying he needs him to go to another level but i can kind of understand where he's coming from because he can't ever play 90 minutes or he can't play back-to-back games mm. so clearly fitness wise or something something's not quite right so that's not his fault. Mm. You can't really blame Mourinho for that. Mm. Injuries again, you can't blame him. But if you ask him to play defensively, he's obviously a defensive-minded coach. But if you ask him to play defensively, but he hasn't got the players to do it, not really what he can do really mm. with the squad that he's got. So it's hands a bit forced. It's just nice to see it because Joe said it, but they don't yeah. care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he didn't know that Kane was going to get injured. Yeah. Someone was going to get but injured. Even so, so without them getting injured, yeah, if you're still leaking goals, it's a problem. To be fair, though, when they were fit, though, he was he actually had a little period where he did right. Yeah, he took them from how many points were they off top four? Like 12 mm. points yeah, he or something. Closed he, did he, right. yeah. he did do all right. He did do all right. Which is gap. as much as it's funny because we want to see Mourinho fail. Like, <laughs> it's just, like you have to, it's, it's true. Sen- if you lose them three players. Sensational. <laughs> Long may it continue. You know what, not so much Sosoko. Sokol. I mean, as I said, he does a lot of people's running, but the goals at Kane and Son yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, you can't, can't, can't legislate for losing that. If we lost Rashford and Martial at the same time. Yeah. You can't exactly. legislate yeah. for... Um, and then you just score probably more goals than your two. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, It's true. How do we approach it? Man United ways that I mean you do, put you, it on them, bro. What they're, four three three? They're, no bro, five at the back this time. No diamonds. Spurs, bro. They're there to get an absolute hiding. That that defense. Wow. Mm. Put it on them. Wow. Thought maybe Pogba could be wow. back in training this week as well. Yeah, but maybe. bro, listen. Just put it on Spurs. Just, they are just there. mad. Is that you just said it yourself there. Even though things are going off, United. The first yeah. person you go, oh, yeah. Pogba's in training. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you got desperate. No, to get but, him no, back. But, yeah, yeah, but he knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah, that literally Pogba is my guy. But honestly, even if Pogba don't play, put it on Spurs, bro. Mm. Put it on them. They are there. We can literally. You see when they come and gave us the free at home. Yeah. I want to give and them that. was in that. the second half as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to, yeah. and I was sitting watching all them goals go. <laughs> Harry Kane's did the back. It was like, I've got <laughs> to half time that game. I was like, we're doing all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, 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 man. And I'm sitting there, yeah, just like. You're watching your brother chat crap outside bro, of Old, old Trafford. I, you know I, mean? I, I came home, my mum was singing, You're not special anymore, the Mourinho <laughs> thing. Bro, we had Josie. No, no, no. Give him free blood. I want to see us absolutely baptise Tottenham, bro. Mm. That's what I want to see. Hopefully we do. We need I to. Want, I want to see we that, need to. Do you think, do you, you think Man United are favourites that game? Yeah, you'd have to say, on form, he definitely are favourites, but you just never know with Josie. He can, he can pull one up the back. Yeah, I, mean, I can. Man United 2 win. <laughs> he can. He can do the little Porto thing. Like yeah, he's done you never us, know. Bro, and a little free kick, jammy, tapping, then the alley You've got people like Lucas Moura, these guys here. Yeah. Listen, Spurs have got good attacking options, obviously. They've lost them two we spoke about but Lucas Moore you know what he's like when people don't give him a chance all of a sudden he'll pop up bang bang I think he's done it to you up before yeah, yeah he done it that's he what he did. Did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah too that, that is what I mean you see pace on the break and an outlet yeah. Lucas Moura that's what you get me yeah, that's the level that, that man needs to be looking at Harry scored ahead of yeah. the corner that's the level that man needs to be looking at do you know yeah. what I'm saying but I reckon we if we go the right way and put it on them because I don't think don't do the cagey thing against Tottenham because you know they're not going to come out firing. Mm. They don't have the guys. I think Jose will have them. Apply pressure. Them. If we score the first goal, and especially if we score the first goal in the first half, 
I reckon they're there for the taking. The longer it's nil nil, the more I'd worry. Do you know what okay. I mean? But I reckon we could we could seriously put it on them, bro. Put foot on their chest, man. They're there. All right. Let us know what you guys think about um, Spurs coming up. Um, we have got Europa League against Lask. Lask was it Lansk? I can't. I, no disrespect. I can't pronounce it. But I'm going to Austria tomorrow. Is it, is it Lask? Lansk? Do you know? No one knows. Bruv, just Anyone make knows? sure, yeah? Lask. Bruv, Lask. <laughs> Bruv, anyway, I'm sure going to Austria yeah. and we're playing the team Just in make sure you got your mask, everything. <laughs> because you don't even know where you're going, fam. No. Do you know what I'm saying? So you no. don't I'll know. Be, what, I'll be alright, man. I'll you don't right. know what I'll level right. the virus is at there. You nah, get me? Because it's in stages throughout Europe. I've got a good immune system. You know what I'm saying? I'm you good. just be flexing. <laughs> I have. I've got good white blood cells, man. I'm fine. Flex will be in the sidelines with his media pass in an empty stadium, man. No fans allowed in. Quarantined off blood, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's hit up the question section. Um, This is from at big... Oh, a bunch of numbers. I can't do all this. At big O, I'm going to call you. Um, This is not football-based. Well, actually, are you a boxing fan? Yeah. Yeah? I know you're a boxing fan. Um, Usyk versus White or Wilder versus White? What would I rather see? Yeah. I'd rather see Wilder versus White because Usyk, I'm a big fan of his, and Dylan's my guy, so I don't want them to fight. You? I'd rather see the Usyk versus what uh, versus White fight from one of the stuff. Yeah, we've seen Fury Wilder. It's not going to be no different. It's going to be another boxing masterclass from Fury. He's going to beat Wilder, but this fight's interesting for Usyk. And but did he say Dylan Wilder? Yeah, no, he said. Yeah, Wilder, 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 Wilder versus White. Or yeah, Usyk Dylan Wilder. White. I'd love to I'd see Dylan. Usyk yeah. versus White. Yeah. Then yeah. Dylan yeah. giving Deontay that left hook and sleeping man. That. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. Who wins that fight? Um, Wilder and um, Dylan White. I think Wilder. I think. Yeah. I like Dylan. Yeah. But I, I, Wilder, I think yeah. Dylan because he's he's a trenches guy. Mm. Fury's shown that when you apply pressure to man, you don't like fighting going backwards in, and I think that Dylan will just turn it into. Yeah, a but I, just, I, I, I worry about that one bomb that he's got, man. And, yeah. and, 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 White's not as good a boxer as Fury. Fury can, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of White's an underrated boxer. No, he's, he's a good got, boxer. He's got, he's got good head movement. He's got a very yeah. good jab as well. I just think that that left hook would literally just take <laughs> man's little, little <laughs> skinny legs off. Man, like SpongeBob, it would give him the boom. Who, who wins um, AJ Fury? If it happens. Oh, Fury. It e- depends on when the like fight. Easy. Easy. easy like that. Easy. Easy like easy. Sunday morning like that. E- easy. I think it depends, depends when the fight is. If the fight is this year, then it's, it's a foregone conclusion, yeah, boxing masterclass from Fury. But I think the longer it goes on, mm. because of the lifestyle and can man keep the weight down and all these things, I mm. think AJ's got more yeah, of a chance. Right, yeah. in, uh, if they fight in two years, I'd back AJ. If they fight now, I'd back Fury. Okay. Um, this is from at Timothy Kennedy 13. I like these questions because they're kind of not just about Man United. They're, they're out there. Best commentator in the game? I do like Gary Neville. I do like him a lot. Do you know, I mean? do you know why? Because you don't sit on the fence. We all know he's a Man United yeah. legend fan. But if someone's not playing well and the way he describes it, and yeah, he's familiar. I think he's a really good pundit. I really enjoy it. I know you having reservations when he talks about Man United yeah, and that, but yeah, as, yeah, a, yeah. as a foot, <laughs> this guy, you know what Rance, they don't like anyone. I don't, <laughs> like, <laughs> sentiment, I don't like sentiment, bro. No, but he's a good pundit, Rance. He is. He's a good pundit. Him and Jamie Yeah, he's a good pundit. Yeah, he's a good pundit. Who else, actually? I'm going to put in there. Michael Jermaine Genius. Yeah. Genius yeah. like over JJ. Michael. Yeah. I don't know. I like Michael when he stood up to yeah. Kino yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Richards has come. He's but Mike in. has yeah. come in with the fresh trim, the suits. I know he spoke yeah. to Redknapp about the suits still. Because he's <laughs> yeah, kind about of, the spice boys. Jamie Redknapp knows suit. about the suits still. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Not sure about the punditry though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, McManaman gets some pelters. Owen yeah. gets some pelters. Nah, yeah. like JJ man is good man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's good. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm, JJ, I'm thinking old school. I'm thinking like Clive Guy Mo. Oh yeah, you like Guy Mo? Yeah, you're old school. Yeah, I like Clive Tilsley. Yeah, bruv, 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 Tilsy, bruv, but they're Champions League nights, nights but I have to bro. ask my mum to stay up late, yeah? Bro. All right, please, mum. Should I, should I, my mum don't know what extra time is and all these bruv, things. Mum don't like Champions League game kicks off at eight. I can't go to bed till ten and that. Like, like mum, please, Champions League. She's like, no, I'm like, mum's a big game. So, when so, you can't even pronounce that big game. Paddy for Nichols at home. I'm like, don't care. Champions League. Man lost skin on my kneecaps, bruv. Van de Stoyway, blood sliding on the floor, boom. Clive Tilsley. Clive in terms Tilsley. of commentators, bro, he's a legend. I Ian Dark. Ian one. Darker. Yeah, he's like Ian from, Dark. Even from Clive boxing Tilsley, to yeah. football, F1, he's done it. He's been there, done it all. Yeah. There's a lot. Andy and uh, Martin I'm Tyler. Thinking, I'm talking more new school though. Yeah. New school, all right. New old school, school has to be Clive Tilsley. Maybe yeah. talking about old school now. Yeah, he's old. Andy Gray, Richard Keys. Super yeah. Sunday yeah. would yeah. be the same. Yes. Without them two guys. Yeah, yeah. they were good. Um, out of the new school, I would say. I think uh, that Gary Neville has to be the undisputed. Yeah. He has to be. But I still say Martin Tyler. Yeah, because he's, he's still part of the music. He's just the undisputed yeah, but legend. Is, is that because you're used to hearing it's his voice? And it's lies. Yeah. It is because I'm used to hearing his voice. Yeah. It's oh, like Marsh. Yeah. 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 All right, don't do that Barrow one. He's, but, like, he's, like, you know he's like the Attenborough of like, Sky Sports, yes, isn't it? Yes, exactly. That's why it's a nostalgia thing. Oh, when he retires, the, the stories that he's going to have are going to be yeah, they amazing. Need to, they need to get Morgan Freeman after him. Like, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do for. And to finish off, I've got a couple
Um, you know, you had a long career, um, played against some top teams, top players, etc. Played through some great generations. Talk to me about uh, or us about you know some of the best players you get played against, some of the teams you feared going to. You know, Man United in the heyday when you was at Spurs, going up to Old Trafford. I remember speaking to Adrian Marapa and he was like, "Listen, when we was on the coach up when it was Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez, we were going to keep the score down, like it was tight." Do you know what? But what was it like for you? We played United in one game when I was at Spurs, uh, and I can never, I will never ever forget it. Where we played, I think it was Super Sunday or something. We went two 0 up first half. Do you remember? Like, it was, was that Old Trafford? Old Trafford. I scored and uh, Modric scored. Went two 0 up. So at half time, we're all high fiving each other. On. All high fiving each other. Yeah, what a result! What a performance! Second half, we come out. Now we're waiting for Man United to come out. They come out and they line up. Carrick and Skulls in the middle of the park. So that was the only two midfield players. Then they go Berbatov, Tevez, Rooney, Ronaldo. Probably 5 2. <laughs> second, second half it was an absolute madness. Um, so, what, what are you thinking in the changing room after that? You think, what, what just happened? Yeah, but even the second half, we're looking around at each other, we're thinking, what has happened here? Because you look who used to come out of the blocks, you know, man, you're yeah, fast. Yeah. Mm. So, it's the first half, a bit sluggish. We just caught you by surprise, 2 0 up, but half the second half, Skulls and Carrick were just like two quarterbacks, man, just going ping, ping. Could you get near him? Like, Couldn't get yeah. no, near, no one. No, I tried to drop in in front of them two, but it was doing them no favours <laughs> because they were just passing to each other. Bam, Rooney was getting them behind, Ronaldo was getting, Berbatov was holding it up, Tevez was just doing what Tevez does. Listen to the names, it's 5-2. Mad. There you go, and then you, wonder, and then you wonder why, yeah? Like, Vidic and Rio behind so me. so hard to please, <laughs> Flex. Go, go, like, go, go. Who's the best player you played against? Defender. Yeah. Who did you, like, think, getting on the coach and think, ha, oh, ah, Led, led the, before I went to Spurs, was always different. Yeah? Ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. ridiculous. A lot of people say that, you know. Yeah. Totally. Like, a bad time of injury, oh, but yeah. solid centre half. Yeah, so are, but as a pair in Rio and Vidic, man. It was mm. all, I was just on the coach sitting there, and the night before, watch videos of, of defensive, where you can get in, where you can't, and it was just like Patrice, Vidic, Rio, <laughs> and I can't believe you were a fullback, would have been. Oh, Valencia. Valencia, I mean. yeah. No change anywhere. None. Like, I was just thinking, <laughs> I'm going to get a goal here. It's going to be like a ricochet, drop to me, and I put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I try and run behind, Rio's going to be there. If I try and, yeah, you've got Vidic, who's an absolute yeah. animal. So it's going to have to be like a little, bit of me maybe a messy one. And in that game there, it was a messy one, because I went for a header. It kind of ricocheted of Rio, hit Vidic, dropped there, and I smashed it, and it went in. Yeah. But them two, like, poach, yeah, as a pair, pairing. But what I liked about them, which is underrated, is how much they used to have a go at each other. They used to have a go with Van der Sar behind them. Today, they used to be screaming at Van der Sar. And I think to be the very best teams, you can't be that kind of like, well, don't worry about it, it's fine. Them two used to scream abuse at each other at Van der Sar, and that's why they were so good. So look at that, you're talking about that leadership that we have. That's what had I'm talking about, yeah. yeah that's, that's, the, that's what they had, and it was like, they used to have full blown arguments on the pitch. And I remember used to think, how can they talk to each other like that? These are top, top players, but it's honestly, and it worked. Mm. But see, and that's why I am so tough, I'm so hard to please, bro, because that is the bar. That's the level that man should be looking at. You see, your man were giving Harry Maguire a stick for celebrating the man of the match when he drew to Everton. Mm. That's why, bro. That man are arguing on the pitch. This is the levels mm. that Man United need to be at. This is too nice to argue. You can no, argue, Harry. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> but you see what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. the levels that man need to be holding these guys to. Mm. That's where we need to be thinking about getting back to. Mm. It's not being better than Arsenal. It's great for Twitter banter and that, but the reality is, come on, if that's man's existence, mm. it's dead. Okay, um, we're at the end of the show. I have to ask this one thing, right? I don't know if you've nah, seen man, it. I need so... to do something. Go on. I need to do something because I don't do this often, fam. You know them ones? You don't get apologies out of me, fam. You're going to say sorry for something? Remember when I called my man the Gabonese Jamie Vardy, yeah? And I, and I need to apologize to Jamie Vardy for that, yeah? But, bruv, imagine, yeah? Remember when I was having banter, yeah? Remember, who's the French Darren Bent, blood? Like is that that bro? Listen, that's what I was just gonna ask him. I was just tell, gonna ask him. Tell them how many goals you scored in the Premier League, please. Uh, one hundred and six, I think. There you go. My man can't see Darren Bent, so we need to find another player to compare man to. That's just like twerking on man. <laughs> I was, was going to say, have you? Like, a lot, a lot of fans here yeah, when they're getting off the lack of So I was saying, how's the French Darren Bent? Almost like, like that's a this or something. Have you Darren one? Bent's have like, you heard that comparison? And two, when you get <laughs> some criticism and that, do you think, put some respect on my name? I'm in the 100 club. Like, how do you yeah. perceive that? The, the, and have you heard that before? The, the Lacazette one, yeah. I, I think someone sent me a picture loads of times where I think if you scored a goal, they were going to get a tattoo. Yeah. And, the tattoo <laughs> <laughs> and it looked like me. But um, as, far, as, far as, as far as the stick goes, uh, as I said throughout my career, like, people, you, you can't please everybody. Mm. People, people are going to say this, they're going to say that, but obviously I'm proud to be in the 100 club. Mm. I'm not saying that everyone does. You look at some of the great players that are not in there. Yep. And for me, it was just obviously a privilege to be in there. And as a striker, I always felt like I'd have got more goals, but it obviously wasn't meant to be. Better than Lacazette. 
Obviously, I'm going to say in my, in my prime. <laughs> he yeah, is, bro. He is 100 club. Arsenal do you know what I mean? Down. It's not for everyone. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, there's enough man at our club in there. Yeah. <laughs> Even the midfielders. But you know what I'm saying? It is what it yeah. is. It's not for everyone. Yeah, do you know what I'm is. saying? So Listen, that's... we've come to the end of the show. Um, Actually, just before, give me a prediction for Spurs. 3 1, blood. Wow. I don't care. Prediction? I'm, I'm going to say 2 2. Ooh, down the fence, mate. Bro, if they got Hennessy yeah, Hugo in goal, blood, they can see more than two. Do you know what I'm saying? Man, uh, like Hugo. I'm going to go over 2 0. I'm going to go 2 0. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go over 2 0. Um, we could be sitting there crying this time next week, but you, hey. you could be sitting there crying next week. Oh, yeah, true, true. true. You'll be happy. Um, Thanks for watching, guys. It's been a fantastic, fantastic show. Thanks for joining us, guys. No worries, man. Do you know what I mean? Actually, your socials and that, man, on Twitter, where, what you're at, is it just at Darren Brent? Easy. Darren Brent, I, see, when you're that famous, you don't have to come up with gimmicky names. I'm just me. Yeah? <laughs> Rant, socials. Aaron's a man's Twitter and Instagram for all your trolling needs. You guys already know what it is. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm Flex UTD across all the socials, and more importantly, make sure you're following the United Stand across all the social platforms. Drop a like on the video and get your comments in, man. It's been good having Darren Brent on. Um, and yeah, you, you like fine content, innit? You enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, enjoy it. Good. Yeah, it's, good. it's a good watch, man. Good listen, yeah. He's always, he's always trying to be nosy, see what's going on. You know? <laughs> yeah. Really wants to try and watch us when we lose on that, but you know, because I mean, we've been doing all right, you know what I mean? But no, keep up the, the mainstream media stuff. We will be back here, same time, same place next week, hopefully, after two wins one in Austria, and hopefully, I'll come back unscathed and you know, still well. And um, one against, or else we're one against doing this on Skype next week, <laughs> boy. that's what I'm saying. But I ain't doing none of this. <laughs> see you guys, same time, same place next week. Peace. Big thank you to you guys for watching the latest of our videos. And if you want to check out more, make sure you do that just to the right of me. We are the biggest and best Manchester United channel in the world. Make sure you check us out on all of the socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. The socials are along the bottom. Peace.